In this video, I'm going to show you how, with Power Virtual Agents, you can now use CLU, which is the replacement for Lewis inside of Azure for natural language detection, if you want to build your own custom language model. Um, I'm going to show you how to replace the embedded NLU inside of PVA with CLU if you choose that this is something that you would like to do. It's a new feature that went into preview at Build, but not a lot of people knew that it actually launched. And also not a lot of people know how to do this because it does have a couple of steps. So continue on this video to learn more. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new chatbot in PVA. So I'm gonna do this and I'm just gonna call this CLU test because we're going to be testing CLU today. We're not going to do any of our other uh, options, and I am going to turn off the lesson uh, topics here, um, and then I'm just going to go ahead and create my bot. I'm going to speed it up through here, but I wanted you guys to see the new cool animations that all, was also released. OK, now that my bot has been created, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the Settings tab, and there is this new language location. You'll see this here where you have information where you can go and learn more about what you need to be able to do. Please be aware that if you decide to use CLU with PVA, you are replacing the NLU that's built inside of PVA with CLU, which is something that you must purchase on the Azure side. So just be aware that this is not included in the price of it, and you're going to need to provision some services in Azure to be able to do this. So let's go ahead and do that. Now that I'm over in my Azure console or my Azure portal, you can see that I have already created a resource group with a, with a CLU implementation. Now, if you don't know how to create a CLU implementation, you can simply go in and look for language uh, and just hit enter and it's right here. And when you go through the creation process of creating one, you don't need to do these other things. You can just continue through and create it. For the sake of time, uh, for this demo, we're just going to use the one that I already have created, which is this implementation here. Now, it's important to know that some things you will need to do will be in the Azure portal, but you will also need to make sure that you get ready to go ahead and open up the Language Studio. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the Language Studio so that you can see that inside of this, I've already created a um, a language studio project and I will go through more details of this other things just to be aware of that you'll want to keep your eyes out for is you're going to also need to be able to go to the keys and the endpoint section and in the keys and endpoint section you're going to need your URL endpoint and you're going to need a key here so keep that open and let's look inside a language studio so in Language Studio, you can create a new uh, conversational language understanding instance here. I've already created one. So let's just take a look at this one that I've created. Inside of this one, what I did at first is the best way that I found to do this is that you'll want to go ahead and open up an empty bot and look at the uh, simple uh, items that are already there. And you'll want to go ahead and create uh, some intents and those intents that you'll want to create, you'll want to train each of those. So like goodbye, you'll say see you later uh, and all of this. And you can see here, like if I take off the filter here for this, you can see all of the basic ones that are here um, are the different intents that are the, the ones that are already inside of PVA. So to simply show you that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over back to PVA just for you to see this for a second. So back over in PVA, I just opened just a bot that I created that had nothing in it. I just called it uh, a demo bot. So in the case that you've already went too far and you've already done the thing where it'll delete the different um, the different topics or whatever, you can just open up any brand new um, 
bot. And then if you look at this and you go into goodbye, here are all the phrases that you can use. So if you just want to take the training that's already in PVA for the base topics, you can just grab those and then make sure that you train that into your Azure implementation. So back over in Language Studio, notice here, like I said, I've done this for all the out of the box topics. And then what I went ahead and did, just so that you can see how to do this, is that if we look at this, you can see here, you can add another intent. I actually added an intent, a new one called, I want to test the model. And I've basically trained it with, let's test the model. And this is how you can add additional utterances. If I wanted to, I can add additional utterances to this um, and be able to make it where we can do more. Um, you can also select an intent. Sorry. You can select the intent here, and then you can just start writing additional items like um, I would really like to test this model. And you just hit enter and you've trained another another way of saying this. So now that we've done that, you pretty much you just go through, you save your changes into your training set. And then you can pretty much just work your way down the side here. So the next thing is that you're going to need to actually train the model uh, when you go to do this. Now, you'll start a training job. Now, if the first time that you do this, you'll need to do it here. But one of the reasons that I wanted to keep this model here is because it's not so straightforward on how you update your existing model. So the way that you do that is you want to say you want to overwrite it and then you select the model that you want to write to. I will just say stay with the standard training for free unless you have a reason to do this. This is uh, I'm not going to do a ton of education on why you would choose different things in Language Studio. Um, but we're going to go through and just take the defaults and hit train. And you say overwrite and train. And now your model will go through and start the training process. And we'll let that run. I have sped this process up in the video. You should expect it to take at least a minute. Okay, so now our model has actually trained. The next step for us is going to be that we need to deploy our model. Um, you can come and look at the performance of it and you can do analysis against your model and such. But again, I'm going to just go ahead and say that I want to deploy it. Again, if you haven't got a deployment, you'll hit add deployment. But even if you want to overwrite it, this is the same way. So I'm in this case, you would create one and call it what you want to call it. Make sure that you take note of the deployment name itself because you will need that later. But here we go. I'm going to take this. I'm going to select the model that I want to deploy. And, and notice that I've deployed in this particular region. And we'll let it deploy. OK, our deployment is complete. So at this point, what we have done is we've created a model. We have went through the process of training it. Then we've went through and deployed it to an end, to a deployment location. So at this point, we have everything we need as a deployed implementation of the NLU from on the Azure side. So we're going to jump back over and do some work now over in uh, the PVA side. So now back over in PVA, what we will need to do is we will need to make sure that we can configure a connection so that PVA can directly connect to, uh, to the NLU service or the CLU implementation. Now, how do you do that? You actually do it by going in to Power Apps, believe it or not. And now within PVA, we've made it where we can directly call a connection or uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the connection, come up and click new connection. You'll type in Azure. And you just do space C and you'll see it right here. Once you click on it, you'll notice that it needs an API key. So we will need to get that API key, the account key and the site URL. So we're going to go get that from the Azure side. and on the Azure side, it's not in the Language Studio. It's actually back in 
your Azure implementation. Again, we said we wanted to grab it here. So we'll just grab the first key. We will come back over. We will drop the key in. And then we need the site URL. The site URL can be found here, otherwise called the endpoint. So you'll just copy it. Back in PVA, you will just drop it into the site URL right here. And you'll hit create. Now, once it creates, you'll see it create down here at the bottom. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over to PVA now because I've created the connection object. Now, once you've done this and you hit refresh, you'll now see that you get a different UI here where you can select the NLU resource that you want to use. And in the case of this, I'm going to select that I want to move to the Azure Cognitive Service for Language. Now, by doing this, I've now selected that I no longer want to have any of the intents. Whenever someone talks to your bot, everything's going to go to CLU. So the first thing that's going to happen as soon as I save this is it's going to offer to save a snapshot of everything that we have. In the case of for this particular demo, I'm not going to do that. But if you've got a bot and you've spent some time on it, I would highly recommend that you save, that you save this snapshot off so that you have a copy of this before you go forward. Because by once you save, once you do this, you're going to have to confirm to delete your trigger phrases. So this gives you the old trigger phrases before you get rid of them. So I'm going to go ahead and hit continue. Now it's going to be asking me for project information and deployment. Now this should look familiar to you because it was things that we had already seen before. So I'm going to jump back over, jump back over into Azure, but know that you need to go to the Language Studio and go into your actual implementation. And we're going to need to look for the pieces of information that, that it's asking for. So again, the two pieces of key information that you're looking for is the project name and the deployment name. So let's go grab the project name first. So again, projects are listed here. So the project name is CLU test. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab, I'm just going to type this in on, on the PVA side. So my project name is CLU test, just like this. Now I need the deployment name. So back in Language Studio, what we're going to do is we're going to look at this particular project. You'll open it up. And again, remember we did our deployments back here. And this is your deployment name right here. So test model deployment is the name of this. So we need to bring... Put, put that in as well. Notice that you really can't copy and paste this. So I would recommend that whenever you're building them, just to, to go ahead and make note of these somewhere easy for you to be able to switch back and forth. Another trick, by the way, is to also just use dual monitors and then you can see, see this in uh, both sides. So I'm just going to type this in, test model deployment and I'm going to hit save. Now, once I'm doing this, what you'll see up here is you'll actually see that it's going through and it's pulling in all the different information and connecting it to, um, to the CLU service. So at this point, we are now connected to the CLU service, but I want you to look at something here. What you're gonna notice is now every one of my topics has errors. And if we even tried to test the spot, like we said, you know, hi, you're going to see it. It would, it's going to fail because, um, because it has no idea how to handle this intent uh, at this point. So, so what we're going to do is we need to do a mapping of the model that we had created and map it over. And we've got this bulk bulk tool 
that will allow you to do this. So if I look at this, it's going to say, hey, I need you to upload uh, the model data file. And, and you're going to go, well, where is that? Where do I get that? So let me show you where it is that you get that. So back over in Language Studio, if you want to get the export, you need to go back up here to your project, select your project, and export it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to export this out, and it's going to want me to save it. And I'm going to save this here. Uh, you can see I've saved it a few times, and I'm just going to go ahead and save that. Now, back over into PVA, you're going to come in and you're going to choose the file, and you're going to select the JSON file that you just got. It will pull that entire JSON structure in, and then you can hit Next. And at this point, what you have is you have an, all of the different things that were already programmed into it so that it will help you go ahead and pull this all together. Now, this is good for initial implementation. So when you're trying to do initial implementations and you've got lots to map, this will allow you to do it. So you can see here are some existing topics. So what I need to do is I need to say that the goodbye is the goodbye, CLU intent, um, greeting, start over, and thank you. And so now I've mapped these together and you move to the next one. Now it's saying inside of the model are some topics that the model has that or some intents that the model has that I don't have topics for. So in this case, what it's going to do is it's going to create a new topic for things that you haven't actually uh, created anything before. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say for this one, I want to just call it test model is the name of the topic I want. And then here I can do the same thing. So this is none. I'll just leave that for none. And we'll hit next. Now, if there were any entities or anything that I needed to uh, register, I would do that here. You can see where you can review it. I'm just going to hit save. And we're done. So now that we've done this, if we come back over to topics now, there's a few things that I want to point out. So one is you're going to see that all of a sudden you've got all these new, you've got all the topics. Notice that there are no errors now. You'll also see that if I came in here and I say hi now, you see that it's now responding like it should. So we should take a look at a couple of key things on the none because it's a none intent. One of the things I like to do is I come in here and delete this, and then I come in and I say, um, for topic management, I want it to go to another topic, and in this case, I want it to go to fallback um, because that's where I want my particular bot to go when it has no topic or no intent determined. So that's and if you wanted to send it through like a GPT model or anything else. You just need to make the decision on how you want to handle none intents. Um, okay. Outside of that, I'm going to take a look at this and let's look at our uh, test model. You can see here that it says, I want to test the model. I'm just going to respond back with um, the, the test was, or I'll just say the test worked. And we'll just hit save. And what will happen now is I will say, I want to test the model. And the test worked. And just like that, I've now got an implementation of CLU as the, as the intent recognizer for PVA. Um, and we've replaced the entire NLU uh, for PVA with CLU. I hope this was helpful. Please subscribe or continue to watch the videos. Feel free to give feedback or things in the comments. Um, I look forward to hearing from you guys. And I hope, again, all of this was very helpful. And as always, you can try out PVA by doing aka.ms slash try PVA and feel free to make sure that you subscribe. Thanks.